Hey guys, I want to thank you for purchasing the Model Y adjustable screen mount kit. These instructions that you'll be watching are primarily shot in my Tesla Model 3. What you need to understand is that the Model Y and the Model 3 are nearly identical in every way regarding this kit, with one key exception, and that is the fabric sleeve in the back. All of the metal mechanical bits are exactly the same between the Model 3 and the Model Y. Uh, however, the, uh, the sleeve in the back is different in that the cabin temperature sensor is different from the Model Y versus the Model 3. So please go ahead and watch the video all the way through, and you'll notice some differences uh, on that cabin temperature sensor. At the end of this video, I will, um, I'll include some photographs of the Model Y cabin temperature sensor mounted to the fabric sleeve. Uh, I will be shooting an entire instructional video at some point with a Model Y, but I don't own a Model Y, and there aren't any locals that have one. So I want to thank Brian from i1 Tesla for using his personal Model Y to do some experimentation for me. Let me know, um, give me feedback on the, uh, the temperature sensor mounting in that sleeve, and he's the one that provided these still images for you. So um, anyway, go ahead and install the kit. And again, at the end of the, of the video, you'll notice some still images along with some text on the screen just to sort of explain the way that temperature sensor mounts to the sleeve. It's a very, very simple process, just two, two screws that mount the temperature sensor to the fabric sleeve with the 3D printed plastic part on the underside of the sleeve. So anyway, if you have any questions, my email address is on the instruction sheet. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the kit. What it does is it lowers the screen about uh, 1.6 inches or so. It angles it forward about 9 degrees, and it is adjustable to pitch it left toward the driver or straight toward the rear of the car. And um, this, uh, this screen mount is... Uh, it should the installation should be very straightforward. Follow the steps. If you have any questions, my email will be a link in the description below. Thanks guys, and let's dig into it. So to start the process, I put the screen in screen cleaning mode. You go to display, screen clean mode. There you go, there's that. And um, next thing I like to do is fold up a towel and lay it right here on the center console. So I have a uh, just an old towel from the house laid down there. Cleaner would probably be better than dirty, but uh, <laughs> Uh, so lay a towel down in the center console and then what you want to do is you look up underneath the screen and here is an access door that there is the cabin temperature sensing probe and this here is a slot to pry that cover down now you'll notice the plastic on mine is marred quite a bit that's because I've taken this off a couple of times so what you would do is get a screwdriver preferably one that is um, not very blunt that's a little bit on the sharp side and you would insert it in that gap kind of push up and turn and get it kind of get it inside now don't be afraid this is kind of hard to get down it'll startle you when it pops down but uh, you pop that down and this is the the cover that uh, covers the access now we'll we're going to be removing these hexagonal bolts here which are 10 millimeter but first let's unplug this temperature sensor and set this aside so you pull that plug out now this is free we're going to be removing this temperature sensor and installing it in the the new soft shroud with the kit so we'll set this aside and we'll go ahead and remove these 10 millimeter hexagonal screws up here all right so got my socket with my socket extension and uh, like I said it's 10 millimeters you just crack those loose like such and then I take the the ratchet right off of the extension and use the extension to spin these free so there's there's one it's a special shoulder bolt so we'll go ahead and set that on the floor out of the way now we'll remove number two bear with me here I'm multitasking holding the camera and doing this at the same time so there's screw number two 
and you can see the same shoulder bolt there. So we'll go ahead and set that aside. Now at this point, believe it or not, that's all you need to do to completely remove the screen with the exception of the wire harness from the screen. So that part is, um, that's a little bit on the sketchy side. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick the camera on the glass, uh, the door so that I can, I can show you how to remove the screen safely. All right, so once you have those screws removed, you can pull gently forward on the screen. I kind of wiggle it and pull, kind of wiggle and pull, and it will come out. Now be careful because it's still attached to the wire harness. So, but there we have it removed. Now the wire harness threads through this plastic bezel and you really can't get down to the release tab to release the harness. It's captured by the bezel itself. So the bezel is removed by using a number 30 Torx head bit. So a Torx is a star and it's number 30. And there are two screws. It's difficult to see on camera, but there's one on each side of this bezel. So I'll remove one and show you here. There's one. I highly recommend using a, in fact, I'd say the only way to do this uh, properly is to use a magnetic tip screwdriver because otherwise the screws could very easily fall down into the screen and short something out. So again, number 30 Torx to get down, take that second screw off. There we go, there's screw number two. Now at this point, the bezel, the plastic bezel, is loose from the screen, and what you can do is move that, move that bezel up the harness a little bit. You want to reveal this connector here. There's a release tab on the side, so you would want to squeeze that release tab. Now this connector is somewhat snug onto the circuit board. It's best to put the screen down like so. Be careful not to drop the screen, but put the screen down like so. Pinch the release tab on this connector, and then you have to kind of work the connector around. To get it to come off, I squeeze this tab. This is the little release tab right here. I squeeze that with my index finger and I roll the connector around sort of in an oscillating motion while I pull on it. Be very, very careful. I would say if you're uncomfortable with this side of it, probably the best person to help you with would be somebody that does computer work that builds gaming systems or whatever uh, because they're used to working with, with this type of connector. But uh, it is, it's a snug fit but you push the release, and again, I rock it gently in circles while I tug to remove it. Do not pull on the wires themselves, pull on the connector body. So once you've got that disconnected, the screen is free. You can set that down on the towel, and then you can remove the bezel. There we go, the bezel is removed. Now you'll notice some scarring of the plastic. That's just normal from prying that door off. I don't really know that there's much way around that because this bezel cover is retained with with snaps on the inside and you can't get to them to release it so you just have to pry kind of hard on that cover to remove it so the bezel's removed the screen is removed and we have the lower bezel cover that has the temperature sensor on it that's removed so that temperature sensor will get installed onto the the new soft shroud that we're making to replace the factory plastic shroud or bezel assembly. So let's go ahead to the workbench. I'll remove this, this sensor and we will start with the, the new mount portion of the uh, installation. All right, so now here we are in the workbench. We've got the, the lower cover here and a number 20 Torx star head uh, bit. So you remove these two screws 
and they put a couple of Tesla puts a couple of washers under each screw. I think that's just because the screw uh, length might have been a little bit too long, but that's the way mine came from the factory. Yours may be different, but mine came with two two washers underneath the head of each screw. So those screws are removed. We'll set those aside. Now this sensor merely pulls right off, and again that will be installed in the shroud, uh, the new soft shroud. Now when you open up your kit, these are the primary components, uh, mechanical components that you'll be receiving with the exception of the soft shroud. Uh, we'll cover that later in the video. But these are the components. So you've got a 3 16 Allen wrench, that's for these two screws here, and then a washer for each of the screws. Uh, these are 5 16 uh, diameter screws that the hex head is half inch. So that's half inch hex. If you're overseas, 13 millimeters will work. And then washers for those. So this is the way you'll receive the kit. I included a 3 16 Allen wrench for these two screws, just mainly for my overseas customers. Uh, an American Allen wrench is kind of a tough thing to come by, whereas most people will have a half inch socket. Or again, if you're overseas, use a 13 millimeter six point socket. So we'll go ahead and transfer these parts over to the car and we'll uh, get started on the screen install. So we'll set the screws aside and get going. So you've got these two primary aluminum components. This is the, uh, the foundation, just the, the main component for the, uh, for the mount kit. And then this is the corresponding screen bracket. So the first thing that you'd want to do is install this into the original location from the screen. So just make sure it's fully bedded in place. Then you take your two original shoulder head screws from removing the screen and these insert up inside the factory original holes. And we'll use our original 10 millimeter socket without the extension now because we can reach these far easier. I don't know the exact torque rating of these, but uh, it doesn't take a lot of torque. Just, um, just snug them down. If you notice that the screen is scooting, you can always snug them a little further but there's no reason to make them super tight. The threaded ends of these shoulder bolts aren't really all that thick, so I'd hate to see someone either strip or break them off. So go ahead and snug that. All right, now this harness is, uh, is long enough to reach the screen with the screen laying in the fa face down position here. So we can go ahead and plug that in and be gentle and rock the connector as you push it down and you'll feel and hear it click into place. Now the next step is to mount this to the screen. So what you want to do, you'll see these machined reliefs. Those correspond with these tabs right here on the screen. So this is the orientation. You'll notice that, that this boss here is offset. That indicates the, the direction of, that goes toward the steering wheel. On right-hand drive models, this will be toward the right. On American or left-hand drive models, this boss is not centered, it's offset to the left. So remember that this is offset to the left and that these notches correspond with these tabs on the screen. So what you would do take your 5 16 which are the longer bolts and be very careful not to drop one of these into the screen again you can short the screen out so stick one bolt with the washer under the head through the bottom of the hole and thread it into place what I typically do is thread it so that the slack is taken but it still moves easily then take the next one, thread it in place. Now there is, from the factory, there are slotted holes that the screen is on. You can move, there's about a quarter of an inch or say six millimeters of movement that the screen can move forward and back and angle a little bit. 
and uh, that's kind of nice because that means that you can fine tune the uh, the installation just a little bit there to your own tastes. So we'll go ahead and snug this down. I'll put it just for me. I'm going to put it so the screen is all the way as close to the dash as possible. So what I typically do is lightly snug one screw down one bolt to keep this mount from moving when I snug the other one. Then I'll snug that one just a little bit tighter. These can be a little bit more firm than the, the mount bolts in the dash there. They're a little bit heavier duty. So there we have the, the screen installed with the mount. Now this is the, the tricky part. This part is a little bit more awkward you have to take the Allen head screws with the washer under each side, put them down through the slotted holes in this mount base, and then down into these threaded holes here. And the orientation of the screen, this is very fiddly. I've done it a bunch of times, so I can do it somewhat easily, but you'll get frustrated doing this the first time. It may be a good idea to have an extra pair of hands help you so you don't drop the screen and have it tug against the harness. But um, but you can do it if you just if you're patient. But it is it's difficult to to locate the uh, the threaded holes that you're looking for and to get the screen at the proper angle to snug these down. So let's see just about all the way down there. And then now they're still loose and you can, if you want the screen to be oriented parallel with the dash, you would set it there. If you want it to be angled toward the driver, you would set it in that position. I'll angle it toward the driver to give you a, a decent view of the, the backside here. So you use your included Allen wrench to snug these screws down. And there you have it. The screen is final installed at this point. Now bear in mind that, um, the the quality of the components is one thing the installation is another make sure you take your time as you can see it didn't take me very long to do this at all but i've done it a few times so you can go ahead and remove this and put the screen back in its stock location within that same 15 10 15 minutes or so that it took to remove it should you want to do that if you're going to sell the car or bring it in for service or whatever. I, I would say the primary concern that I would have is not dropping any screws inside the back of the screen when you have it laying face down because you could easily short something out. I uh, Luckily enough, it was unplugged at the time, but when I was working on this initially, it was unplugged. There was no power to it, but I did drop a screw in the back and I had to shake it and wiggle it to get the screw to come out. So just be uh, aware of that. Also, <clears throat> be aware of the fact that you're taking responsibility for this. If you're if you're uncomfortable doing this install, I highly recommend you find somebody that is very adept at using tools that, as I mentioned earlier in the video, that might build custom computers. This is very similar to what a computer technician would do. But as you can see, it takes some simple tools, a number 20 Torx bit, a number 30 Torx bit, a 3 16 Allen wrench that I include in the kit, and either a six point 13 millimeter socket or the equivalent is a half inch six point socket that's all that's needed and a flathead screwdriver to pry off the little cover but aside from that it's just patience and taking your time so be careful but go ahead and um, you know install it let me know if you guys have any questions so um, other than that I think um, I think we're good uh, if you have any questions for me, my email address will be a link in the description below. All right, so here's the sleeve, and the orientation of the sleeve is this is the inside of the sleeve as it's wrapped around the mount, and this would obviously be the outside. This would be the bottom of the sleeve, which sits just above the, uh, the cell phone carrier in the car. This 3D printed plastic part lays here on the bottom side of the sleeve. Then you flip the sleeve over, and mount the cabin temperature sensor down into this opening and secure it with the two screws through the temperature sensor, through the fabric, and into the 3D printed plastic part below.
All right, so we'll take our wire harness, plug it into the temperature sensor. There we go. That's plugged in nice. And um, we'll go ahead and wrap this around. Now what I do is I take this edge and tuck it into the opening of the dash at the bottom. And then I hold it up with my right hand and with my left hand, I feed the strap portion around. Now, you want to make absolutely sure that it's tucked in down at the top. So it gets tucked in at the bottom, pulled around and tucked in as well at the top. Now, this is a little bit fiddly the first time you do this. And um, you can, I found that you can, you can put your index finger and your thumb together grasping the edge of this on the the inside by the driver's side to pull it into the dash and um, again it's a little bit fiddly but you pull the top around make sure again that the bottom is tucked into the dash opening and then you pull the right side passenger side around and fasten the velcro Make sure again that it's all tucked in place. And um, you may get a little bit of pucker here and there and you can work that out. I found that it's, um, it's really not that hard to work any puckers out of the shroud. Just takes a little bit of effort and um, there you go. It takes a little bit of effort to, to get it just right. So thank you very much. If you guys have any questions, by all means, shoot me an email.